three, two, we are live. This is 2OF Entertainment. Welcome to the Lost Dollar Business Club, where we talk about business, 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 and not just business. We talk about what makes businesses go up and what makes businesses go down. If you're interested in businesses, this is where it is. We talk about the global economy. We talk about global politics. We talk about everything and anything business related that affects your life on a global scale as well as a local scale. And don't miss after the show, Lost and Found. Here we hello, are. We're back. Hello, various <laughs> members and guests yeah. of the Lost yeah. Dollar <laughs> Business Club. We, we do have various members. We, we have the we have the various members, and we have a guest today. So there you go. Yeah. That's true. We've got the full package complete today. The, once the full month. Full hunt, yeah, Full situation. Yeah. Great to see you guys. Good to see you there, John. NBC. Nothing but commentary as always. Hey, and before we start. Just to let everybody know that we do stay on top of things. The um, the U.S. government just came out with their uh, job growth, and the job growth is weaker than expected. Higher than the U.S. was weaker than expected in August. Employers only added 142,000 jobs. Um, so basically, uh, the world is screwed, and we're all going to die. Okay. So with, on that pleasant great, note, great it's note a good thing. Great <laughs> note to start on. Great note to start on. But, you know, they're – they're, they've been they've been wrong before. They've been wrong before. Yes. There have been revisions. There have been revisions to the numbers. Those numbers might be revised next month. We're not sure. They're always revised. They revise them every other day because God forbid, um, you know, they would stick to a set of numbers. You know how it is. It's like we give you numbers today, and then in about three weeks when no one's reading the paper, we give yeah, you the real we'll, numbers again. So yeah, then we'll give you the. So it's always that. Unemployment rate went from four point three to four point two. It's the end of the yeah. world. We're all going to die. I'm, we're yeah. still underemployed from 2008. So, no, like, until we really address that, that, that as a yeah, as a real crisis, because everyone knows it was a recession. It was a depression, and we're still not out of it. So, until we address that, these numbers are just make believe mental like masturbation. Good, that sounds like a good show, a good topic for another show. We've got to we've, so. we've got to find an economist to talk about the continuing depression from 2008 because I think you're right. I yeah. think uh, anybody who sees the actual economy is knows that you're right. So maybe yeah. we got to get some. Uh, the U6 unemployment rate, which is you know covers uh, part-time people, uh, it went from 7.8 to 7.9. So that gives you a little bit better. Oh my God! Picture. That whole point, John. That's four people. That's great. And this is the four people next door. That's no, but awesome. the number 7.9. Go back to 2008 right. when you had. That's what they admit. Real employment, and then go to today, you'll find that we're still probably twenty percent of the population is either underemployed or unemployed. So yeah. let's go look at real numbers, not the make believe farce that the U.S. government gives everybody. So the make believe Goldman Exchange, I mean the stock market, I'm sorry, goes up and down. Okay, so if we're going to really look at it, let's really look at it. But this ridiculous crap every week is just ridiculous. Because well, they on, don't count people fall off and whatever. So on the twenty, so on the twenty eighth of September, so the show that comes up in three weeks, we yep. are going to have Guy Standing on the show, who is an author, who's written about the precariat, which is a precarious class of people who are either unemployed or underemployed, and he'll be talking about that. He'll be talking about basic uh, basic income, and. Uh, and yeah, we'll have a good. That'll be a good, uh, good conversation to have with uh, Guy Standing on September twenty eighth. So stand by, everybody. That's uh, that show's coming that'll, down. The that'll be fun. I'm looking forward that to will. it. Get the freedom and the flexibility of remote work in the lucrative tech industry. Bend your life around, around the world. Bandicoot is the premier course and community for thriving in a remote tech career. Join the revolution today. Bandicoot.com, official partner of the Lost Dollar Business Club. All right. So for today's show, we are back. And so for today's show, we've got Muhammad Sadiq, who is a founder and entrepreneur from Atlanta, Georgia. Now, this really? guy has 26,000 followers on LinkedIn. Wow. Okay. He's got 40, 45 mutual connections with me somehow. So that's wow. uh, there's, there's some overlap there. There's some overlap. Uh -oh. 
but he's built and sold four businesses. He's written a book, uh, How to Build, Run, and Manage Unstoppable Successful Teams. And uh, we're going to talk about co-authoring. We're going to talk about his businesses. And we'll talk about uh, how he does it on uh, get such such reach on LinkedIn. So why don't we bring him in? And there he is, everybody. John, do you have applause anywhere, David, in your sound stuff? Do you have like something that goes, yeah, you have one of those? <laughs> well, let's, well, let's have a look. We, we, have, we do have this one. Oh, uh, we do have yeah, that. Yeah, that's close that's enough. enough. <laughs> yeah, close enough, David. Close, close enough. enough. Yeah. But there we'll, you go. We'll, we'll have some. We'll, we'll put some applause in the in the library, and we'll use that next time. Yeah. That's next time we have a guest, you can have applause. There you go, Muhammad. That's welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm so glad to be all the handsome people. All right. Oh, he's all right. right. Yeah. He's probably yeah. watching well, he another see. show. He's watching another show. Oh, so, I just think I like you already, Muhammad. You can stay. <laughs> 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 so, so Mohammed, you've you've come a long way in your career. Uh, you've built and sold four businesses. So, why don't you give us a little bit of a little bit of the beginning? How did you get started on this pathway of really lead generation and uh, and and global client acquisition? I mean, how'd you get started? That's a fully loaded question. So I think oh I yeah, to, oh I yeah, we're to... fully loaded here. Yeah, absolutely. So I am. Uh, you probably can by looking at me. You can probably tell I'm migrated here legally. Okay. <laughs> so in 1997, and I started working for a little company called Oracle for three, four, five years. Travels all over the U.S. and you know, as a consulting, you know, leave Monday morning, Sunday night, and come back Thursday night, and you know. And I I meet people and you know like working and learning. So I learned so much and to five years and like a, somebody will learn in 20 years you know because when you work on so many consulting clients and everywhere wherever you go you always start from a zero because you're at the new step new challenge and then of course family life has suffered in that one why because you know i had a little beautiful daughter you know little kid one kid and one wife okay just you know so and in the meantime i said what should i do where i so i can stay close uh, uh, close to the family, you know, local. So I, I started yeah. on a small business on a, right, uh, on a side, side, as a side hustle, like a gig. The so plan was whenever it's going to make uh, whatever I'm making from the salary, so I kind of switch to the permanent. You know. Started doing a consulting for placement, like a staffing company. Mm. Then we sold, and then, then we went into like e-commerce when the Google's Paper click was one cent, so now I'm now making oh, wow. one cent. Yeah, so our client yeah. acquisition cost was four dollars and twenty-two cents. Very, yeah. What a different time! Mm -hmm. so you're, ta you're talking, yeah, twenty yeah. years ago. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, almost over twenty-five years ago now. So, and we we run that business for twelve years and sold for millions of dollars worldwide in our little niche. We were the number one worldwide, competing with twenty thirty companies. And my background is not from a, like a growth and a lead generation, as you mentioned. I have a master, uh, master's in computer science and I learned by accident. I hired another company to do the marketing for me and I paid them $5,000 25 years ago and I got zero results. Mm -hmm. and my partner will say, oh, you don't even know how to hire the marketing company. We, we, we just learn yourself. I say, how can I do it? Then I'll hire another company for $3,000. I kind of negotiated more and I got a little bit results. And third comp uh, person, I said, you keep, I hired as a mentor. I say, you are going to teach me, watch, I will pay for your whatever we agreed on. I will do it. You just watch what I do based on what you are going to teach me. That changed my life. To get mentored. All right. Do you, do you want to name drop who, uh, who mentored you? Is this, is this somebody that we would know? And not that, uh, that marketing company you would not know. I don't think so. They are in business anymore. You know? Okay. So, however, I, then after that, I learned hey, how you go with the mentors. All of that's where your light bulb comes up because mm -hmm. they had already traveled that path. You are, you are, we intend to travel. And then I you always have a mentor. Even right now I have a mentor. No, that's a good, no, that's a, that's, those are two, those are two really good points. I would say for certainly our listeners is, you know, the first is sometimes you got to learn to just do it yourself. Yeah. And you're going to get better results. And second of all, yeah, have a mentor. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good point. Yeah. 
So that was a business in e-commerce. So and that company is still in business. We sold in 2008. You guys are from New York. You know, 2008 was not doing really great. We were just talking about it. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. So we sold that company in 2008, and we made very good money, multiple seven figures. And then uh, opened another business, and another business, and another business. All done very well. This is today, right now, after four companies, my wife says, "What you're going to do? You keep." Like building new business, is that like a you know almost like a drug? You know, I said no, it's not a drug. It's like you now I'm allow me to open a one more business, and I won't open any more business after that. Which is we know how to grow a business. That's why we like it. take a business, grow it, and then sell it. And now we have a lead generation company. That's the only thing I'm going to do is going to help others to grow. This All right. So this is one more. This is the one more business that you're allowed to have. That's it. it is okay. a lead generation yeah. business. Yeah, like a business development, like how to uh, grow at scale. Yeah, uh, when you want it in any economy, we we were making very good money in 2008 too. Not like, I have not lost any money in all those four businesses. I failed many times. It's not like I mean I never failed. I failed many times over all those four businesses, and we sold it in 2012, 2009, I think uh, 2008. So. Very, very good. You know. So what do you, what do you, I mean, when you, when you look back at those four businesses and you know, what, what were some of the things that you learned that you think of, maybe you learned some, some things from those four businesses, but I mean, the world is a little bit different now. So what has kind of changed from when you've sold things now then to, to what the world is now? Yeah, Michael, a, a great question. I, tactics, tech, tools, Technology changes. However, the main methodology of keeping a customer, acquiring mm -hmm. a customer never changes. In the marketing, there's only three things matters. We call it a three M's of marketing. One is the market you want to go after to, you need to identify. It's almost like a finding a somebody, a dating partner. You got to know exactly everything. What challenge Very they specific. Have, what, very specific. More you know, the highly likely you will be successful. The ideal customer profile, right? Yeah, ICP, ideal client, ideal client profile, exactly. So you got to know your that never changed in 2001 and not in 2000 and not in 2024. Yeah. You got to know your ideal customer. Then you got to know where they are hanging it. Are they using Google? Are they using Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever? You know, it could be mm -hmm. a other platform too. And then you got to know because once you know their challenges they are having and what the pain points are and how you have a, like a you know, prescription for that, whatever the widget you are selling, that's how you come up with the message. Mm, the message, sure. The market, the message match, it has to match. Like you can't sell a hamburger to a vegetarian, it does not matter. How <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you can. You well, you, yeah, you, you can now. <laughs> yeah. So, and the third, uh, this the market, the message, and the third one, the medium, where you're delivering the message to. Is like right. A ad, is it like a LinkedIn ad, or is it a newspaper ad, or is it like a, that, that will change the format of the message. So as far as you have a three M's, market, the message, and the medium, you will walk that Never change. I don't think so. Nice. All right. Okay. Fair point. Fair point. Um, and then, uh, I mean, look. So you're you're listed on so on LinkedIn. Let's let's talk a little bit about LinkedIn because I I love talking about LinkedIn. Uh, not necessarily on this show. We we haven't talked about it too much. But I use LinkedIn a lot. And actually, Stephen uses LinkedIn a lot too. Um, you've got you've got twenty six thousand followers on LinkedIn, and you're labeled as a top franchising voice. So you want to tell us like how you did that? How how'd you how have you how have you grown your LinkedIn profile to have that kind of reach? So again, your market. So my market is people who want to open a new business. Yeah, franchising is where we kind of uh, that's how we generate leads for the franchising clients. You know, franchisors. So any niche you want to go after, you go deep. You become the subject matter expert on that. Contribute enough content on that platform. That's how you become a top voice, anyway. So you have to, of course, it has to be quality content at the same time. And LinkedIn, we value. In fact, we use, a, especially after COVID thing, you know, because all the corporates they have the 
break the barriers of gatekeepers. They, they went online directly because they, all their VAs were not really, everybody was remote. They have to check really themselves. So it really opens up so much. So there's virtually a zero excuse of outreaching to anyone. Like, I, can you imagine I outreach to Stephen and he got on a call with me? Is that right, Stephen? I think he reached out and he yeah. said, you know, you didn't reach out. Some bot that was a girl reached out to me or uh, <laughs> reached out and she said, we want you to be in our book. And I was yeah. like, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll listen to, I'll listen to what you, what you want. And then they told me and I said, you don't want me. You want to be on our show. And that's how this, this is how this all came. So it's like my team, but at the end it's, it's the same thing. So I outreach, I outsource to my team. Hey, can you do it for me? And then you know, I can have the conversation. Are you are you using AI? Uh, how are you using AI? Because you must be using AI for your work now. How are you using AI? It's a hybrid. We talk about this a lot. It's a hybrid. Okay, the, the messaging we use that's not AI. Okay, the message outreach. You come up with that on your own. Yes, because we understand who we are outreaching to and what should be the message that will attract the response. And by the way, it's a very good response. You know, like in a few weeks, I have a hundred three meetings. Right. One campaign, just you. So that is a very successful campaign in terms of outreach and generating a response. So, and then once we have the, okay, we ask for a cell phone number. You know, in that case, uh, call CTA, like a call to action. Mm -hmm. The moment we have the cell phone number, then from there, the meeting has to be booked. So the step, first step is, is to generate a response. The second step is to book, a, have a back and forth text message to gen, uh, generate a meeting, book an appointment. That right. is AI in our case. Yeah, to actually get the appointment booked. Yeah, no, that's appointment booked. Yeah, that makes sense. Then at the end, I, I still have to show up on a call with the accent, so I can't really change. Are you that. sure we're not talking to an AI? Is this Muhammad AI? Yet. Yeah, not yet. not yet. I didn't say it will never happen. How okay. About yeah, yeah, not yet. That's there is right. a guy who invented that though for interviews. That uh, he has an AI thing where you talk for the first few minutes, and then it literally goes from you to the AI and you can go do whatever you want to go do. Wow. I, I, I've seen that text. It's going to happen. Pretty, it's going yeah, to happen where people aren't even going to show up anymore. Unless you show up I'm to the gonna office. I'm just going to send my digital so my, AI twin. Yeah, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> well, let's talk about the, the book because that's fast. So it's, it's, it's I want to say like a club. But that was interesting. So that's really kind of like your background is, is intriguing. You have 26,000 followers. Um, that's intriguing, I guess. I, it's LinkedIn. So to me, it's like Facebook, just, you know, less professional. Um, so, <laughs> I, you know, LinkedIn now is just like Facebook. So tell us about the book and the, the idea behind writing the book and what you're looking for. And then yeah. how does that work? Because you have to pay to be in your book. So when you told me that, I laughed at you, uh, and you know that. So, but then you were telling me what it did, and I was still so it's like, yeah, whatever. But it's interesting for people that I think want to not so much make a name for themselves, but to make contact. Um, I think that it's it could be interesting. So tell everyone about the book because I think that's an interesting concept. Yeah, again, happy. Thank you so much for again. As so I am an author of a book, New Success Secrets. How to Build, Run, and Manage Unstoppable Success Team is available on Amazon. And I co-authored with my mentor, T. Kathauser. Uh -huh. And he was author of 57 books. Nice. Prolific. Prolific. So I, I authored, and I, he was my mentor for 15 years. He passed away in 2018. Great man. I still miss him every day. So I learned once I had the book, how much opportunity they really opened it for me. I have mm. spoken to media internationally, even in the US and all over the world. Spoken on stages to thousands of people in universities and commercial, you know, like where I sold my programs to. So I, because I'm a feature of uh, publisher of magazines too, so billionaire mentor magazine. And uh, well, we'll get a close up of that mentor. Go ahead, put the mentor okay. magazine up. up. There you go, yeah. mentor magazine. Uh, wait, I don't see us. I don't see us there, guys. I don't. I don't see us on that magazine cover. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Wow, they, they take care of that. So we're, we're on the we're on the next book. That says that I'd like to be a billionaire. Ah, I thought oh, I thought we were on the book that said how do you take two hundred and fifty million in real estate and turn it into twenty five dollars into cash? I think that's the book oh, we're on. So there yeah. you go. So by a football team, I oh, think. And that's, no. what you do. that's the way you do it. 
yeah uh, to in relate to your question like uh, not everyone many people have a plan to write a book a complete right. book it takes a lot sometime a year to year time you know people say you can do a, get it done in one weekend it's like you know it's not that easy the book itself the book part so i said how about doing a book with everyone write a one chapter 3 to 5 pages only 2 to 3000 words and book title is 52 business hacks everyone has a one they are really good at it it will not take too much of their time and they can probably get it done on a weekend yeah but i don't if if i'm writing in that i don't want to be known as a hack right is hack is is ethical hack it's not that hacking as a right, business right. hack <laughs> business hack no because it's like oh this is oh wow you do it this way that we all know something which is very very unique to us you know and they want to share it that's why they're writing a chapter however because we make it as steven said is a is a package so the really author wins a wow many time then and how how would my introduce how, how much would you pay me for that for my contribution <laughs> in fact the in fact the is the other way around because you're going to make a lot more money from that doing that way so the whole package well, is not only well, writing yeah it. but that's basically jam tomorrow isn't it i mean so i'm help you know what why would why would i why would i want to yeah tell invest, us why would somebody yeah, want to become why would I invest in you with a, with because uh, you're asking me to invent uh, to invest in your dream and your promise yeah so first of all the book once the book is completed number one is we promote the book before the book is published okay that's your david your win comes right on the start so let's say you commit you want to do a chapter today first of all it's going to be international best seller we are going to promote the book once it's a completed people are waiting most of 99% 99% people who are writing a book they are going to promote it once the book is complete hey buy my book buy my book which is good nothing against that what we do is once the author commits to us working with us we start promoting a book and generating a leads for the author right on the start within a week book may be published 3 months from now you may receive 100 200 300 leads in next month two months three months time because we are going to promote a book to 250000 of business leaders that they are, they are your icp like ideal client profile so you are going to receive the leads and of course uh, the, the people we are not selecting everyone it's only for a select number of people who are doing some kind of consulting work because they can they are their ideal clients okay so you you want you want to get people who are already doing consulting work yeah so if someone is just, basically able to take on a client immediately Yes, are somebody is thinking to do it on a side something? They they want to transition from working for someone to doing on a side side gig like I did. Okay, so this is so that's an important that's an important distinction is you're looking for people who are sales experts who have some sales hack to to promote, but are also interested in actually either starting their business as a consultant in sales or already promote their business as a consultant in sales. That's correct. In so, fact, but do you, Mohammed, excuse me, but do you actually, would you actually pay me dollars then if it's going to be a bestseller? Because I'm I'm contributing towards our success. Surely, if I if I uh, if there's if there's fifty chapters of which I'm one of them, I should have one fiftieth of the of the profit that you're taking from it. So Is there a profit? Yes, I know, I know, I know. I understand the question. So the David. you are becoming a international best seller co-author of international best seller so you are really gaining an edge it's not really me it's a, well my name no no because my I, my name's not on the cover is it so how to how to how 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 would anybody know that they go into a bookstore they pick up the book it's got your name on the cover and um and, it's, it's not going to be my name at all it's all the authors the book is owned by all the authors okay you are, the, you are one of the author Fifty, fifty-one other authors' name. So it's not like okay. you know every author. It's so anthology. Let me, let, me ask, like let, let me let me just ask this, if I may. So you don't really want like CFOs or CEOs or COOs to write a chapter because they're not really going to get anything. You, you sounds like you want more. If I'm a consultant and I can turn around a company, or I'm a consultant and I can do whatever it might be, you want me to basically write my chapter on my skill set. So what you're hoping for or they're hoping for is that like our company reads the book and we're like, "Oh, 
this guy could do X, Y, Z, we can use that. And then we reach out to him through the book because we liked what he, his case study. So that almost, correct me if I'm wrong, it's almost like a three to five page case study. So it gets people like, oh, okay, we can use that person to help us revamp or redo or move our company forward. Is that kind of where the, that's kind of what the thought process is for the book? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's, that is correct. So, but, it's, okay. but it could also be like a glorified, you know, job board, couldn't it? Same thing, really. I'm just putting my wares up in the hope that. It's, it's marketing, advertising. It's, modern, it's, it's a modern thing. form of marketing for sure. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Yeah, yes, it's a marketing, and in fact, you are receiving a lead before even the book is published. That means they they agree to receive the book when the book is published. And uh, as an example, most of the time you are as a CEO, they are talking to the marketing people on the other side. In this case, they are talking to the author who is a subject matter expert on that topic. Once you are published, you can get opportunities to speak on. Well, let's yeah, let's let's talk about the, those opportunities because you know you mentioned that there's a there's an there's a you have a built-in audience of two hundred fifty thousand executives who would who would presumably at least be exposed through your network to this this book that you're putting together about sales hacks. Yeah. So tell us about that. I mean, how did you get two hundred fifty thousand people? Are they really going to read it? Are these people who are even are they interested? Are they vetted? What industry are they from? Tell us about them. Because in this book, the the market is the all the business owners, basically CEOs, founders, and co-founders, and you know, owners, presidents of the companies. And we use a LinkedIn. LinkedIn has like millions of four or five million. We only look at the companies who are actually hiring. So we look at the company who is hiring and then look outreach to those CEOs, like even growing at 2%, 3%. So have you have a that. process for reaching out yeah. to CEOs who are also hiring. That is correct. That means they are signal is they are growing, basically. You know? <laughs> Growth, if they're like, like not hiring, that they're means not they may not be yeah. growing. So that they may not even, the likely of new opportunity is not there, you know, Yeah. at least. Because when you have 5 million people to order to, I'd rather go to the more targeted one, the more win for the author. But is that, that target must be flexible then, must be moving up and down, because it's not always the same 250. No, because with that, because when you design an offer, you say, okay, I'm going to show you, okay, I'm going to order to the, that many number. It can be even 1 million, but then, you know, the cost goes way up. Well. Now, this is interesting language. I mean, you're saying, because I've heard this before, when you talk about designing an offer, you know, that's a very common marketing technique now to say you're creating this, you know, the, you're creating the offer, the call to action for a particular audience, for a particular market, and it's going to resonate with a particular group of people. So this 250,000 people that you're targeting, these are people who are CEOs or leaders of companies that are growing, and it's a subset of the whole ecosystem on LinkedIn. That is correct, yes. Very cool. And oh. how many, I, I know you said there's 52 chapters when we spoke. How many people have you got so far, chapters that people are writing? So we have around 17 people at this moment. Like I can 17? Okay. Yeah, 17, but hopefully from your show, we'll, I will fill up the all oh, of you. Got That's millions. Right. That's right. Millions and millions. <laughs> oh, you won't have to do it yourself. Yeah. We'll even write it. We'll even write a chapter. <laughs> David, you going use David uses crayon now, so uh, you don't expect too much. Yeah, it has a, it has okay. The number one is like an international bestseller. The number two right. is you are receiving the leads from your ideal client, of course, because we understand marketing pretty well in that case. The third one is we are putting a mastermind. So all the fifty-two authors for one year once the book is published, so we will have once a month mastermind so that will open up your collaboration with other. Okay. Have CMOs, C, CO, CFO, CROs. When you see it access to a master, basically for a CEO yeah. is a dream team. Basically, you know? right. they will have the experts of the similar level, and we are not looking for somebody who just joined as a CFO to some company. So when you see it's going to be an international bestseller, are you hoping? Because you can't say that right now because it's not out. So you, you're you're based on your marketing ability. You're saying you <laughs> you guys think it's going to be an international bestseller? Yeah, yes, it it will. It's a guarantee to be an international bestseller. Here's here's how it works, by the way. So okay, 
it has to be number one, number two, number three, and top 100 in, in Amazon in four, three countries. Meaning we will go for four countries, Australia. Well, UK. unless you're not, if you're not on the New York Times bestseller list, then you're not a bestseller. So let's just be blunt. So and, you're talking about an ebook. So I'll be on Amazon. On Amazon. We're talking about the Amazon bestseller list. Okay, okay. I, I'm talking is, about the real that is Amazon is uh, almost a standard of uh, becoming a like Amazon bestseller is only in the US. Right. When people say I'm a bestseller. They say that they're talking about US only. When okay. you go in the three countries, Amazon gives you a sticker. This is international bestseller. Okay. How you get a sticker, it? guys. Yeah. Remember that. Wait, wait, so, what three countries? What three countries stickers. make you an international? What are three countries that make you an international bestseller? The U.S. and who else? It can be any three countries where the Amazon is there. However, we choose okay. English countries, English speaking, Australia, UK, okay. Canada, and of course U.S. You know, so we will go okay. to countries. And my partner, who we are doing, is of course we have partners who. They have done over 100, 100 plus books. All. So you're you're also assuming then that people who contribute to your book have international businesses. Because that's because like if a, not, if I'm stuck in the UK, then all those wonderful, uh, you know, one eight hundred numbers are of no value to me at all in the US. No, the international bestseller is a book. Yeah, I appreciate that. But if I'm no, part of your the, book, yeah, the, so I'm part of an international best-selling book. Of which I would receive, um, uh, you know, the, the the milk and honey from from the success of that book, um, where for most of that is U.S. centric. So why would it be of any interest to anybody outside of the U.S. to contribute to your book? At this moment, we are targeting uh, mostly in the U.S. Even okay. though, because once you have the it's a proven so, so why so why is it important then are you just you're just interested in people reading it outside of the us not using it that gives so, you the higher authority once you are like a high level as international bestseller it's like a expert from far it's like right. that's what the international speakers they speak in dubai and everywhere else and now they get more speaking gigs in fact you will get a 90 percent more business local that's to give you a competitive edge as compared to someone else how why they should choose to work with you one more reason. It's not like that's not the only reason. You know, it's like a, you're getting a higher status and they say, I'm interested in bestseller on, on the, this topic. And many companies who are doing a business global too, because you are international bestseller, they will actually hire you for their international uh, as well. All right, but tell us so 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 give us the give us the summary, Muhammad. Why, why should somebody who whether they're so they're an English speaking sales consultant who wants to target executives. What's the why should they spend any time writing three to five thousand five thousand words for a book that okay maybe it'll become an international bestseller or maybe it's guaranteed that it'll be an international bestseller but you know why would an author who's listening to the show right now why should they beat down your door go to meetsadiq.com and say I want to be an author first of all they have to have they want to share their knowledge with other people that's like not everybody want to do it if they have that. Yes, I want to share knowledge and spread it. And okay. cost of acquisition of client goes, goes lower once you're an expert author. If let's say you have a 20 meetings right now and you only make a one sale, as compared to you are an author on the topic, your trust level, the built-in trust with the author is already there. So your conversion will go higher. So there has so many benefits. And plus you want to be part of mastermind you want to receive more leads, which is the cost of acquisition of client goes lower. Right now you're spending two, three hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars for one client to acquire. In this case, being an author, when you're giving away your book, the cost of acquisition of client goes, I would say less than half what you're doing right now. That's I have seen it before my book and after the book. I'm, I don't talk about other people. I, I can tell my own story, you know. Right. After you wrote the new Success Secrets book. Yes, that's why. And in fact, I'm writing another book, which is already written now. And it's going through the editing at this time. Because first was a good success. Now I want to make it even better the next one. Same way. Sure. John, 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 Mr. Nothing But Commentary had no commentary so far. So come on, give it, give us something, John. What are you thinking over there in the, in the upper right? No, sorry about that. 
<laughs> Steve said that I was that was. He was my audio he was, was murdering fuzzy. every time he would be off of mute, so he kept putting him on mute. Which was no, you're right, right, you're right. He kept no, you're right. Like I heard yeah. that, but that's okay, John. Now you're not. So tell us what you yeah. think, because John's always our our our, no, wow. uh, our voice of reason, right, Stephen? There you so, go. So yeah, no, it's it's a it's a very interesting concept, you know. Uh, you, you're an expert. You you want to go in independence. Uh, you have a skill, and this is a people gravitate to a book that's that's a bestseller. For, you know whether it, right or wrong, they they will just go there, and they'll maybe not everybody will buy the book, but enough people will. And, and so I think it's it's a it's a very interesting concept. Now. Uh, I guess uh, if you're trying to start a business, then you're willing to pay to to, to get on the in, on the book. Uh, and my only question is, uh, when I look at the book and the authors, what's you know what's the what's the qualifier to be to be on the book other than you know just uh, paying to write a chapter? Because yeah, how do you guarantee I've, the quality of the authorship? Yeah, yeah. So all of them so far we have uh, considering and moving forward, they have a minimum of 10 years experience of that field, 20 years, 25 years. So you're dealing with the experts. If someone is just newbie, we are not considering that. So at least a 10 years experience in that topic. You know, they, have worked, they may have worked for multiple companies or the combined experience on that title is minimum 10 years. That's how we are focused on when we are outreaching ourselves to. Because we know our ideal point. Well, that's an interesting point. I mean, you could yeah. so you're 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 saying you're focused on people who have the years of experience. Yes, yeah. They um, have real wisdom to share, basically. Yeah. Why don't you somebody pays you to be in the book and they write their their case study, for lack of a better term, and it sucks. <laughs> and it's not going to really go with the flow of the book. Like, you know, you you say David says, I'm gonna do it. And he submits his five pages of crayons. And uh, we've seen his crayons. Yeah, they're not that good. Um, then what happens? Do you go, you're not cut out for our book and you refund the money because it's just going to bring down your book? Or do you go, we'll make the crayons work? How does that How does that work for you guys? We have a professional editor uh, team, editing team as well. So what we do okay. is we look, uh, first we, we agreed on the topic of the chapter title. So every content has to be on that topic right. only, not like whatever they think. So first we agreed on the chapter, and then of course uh, they write it, and we show them a few samples as well. Okay, here's how they look like. So they give them the guideline to really, you know, what to write, how to write okay. it, and then the professional editing team actually make sure edit it properly, and they can have give them back to further review. So that really improves. So far, people who have experience, they don't really write, and. If someone is like a very challenging in writing, like a, as an example, let's say I will put myself in that spot. I was mm -hmm. initially, I was very challenging in writing. In fact, I still have a little bit left. The challenge takes a lot to go away. So what I tell them, hey, come on a call with us on a Zoom call like this and just talk about the topic. So then we use AI to trans, uh, transcribe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then professional editor will rewrite it on that topic and then give them a to be to review it, make sure that way. Yeah, that's that's a that's a good technique. I've I've talked with friends who are authors or or magazine writers, article writers, and yeah, you know, sometimes just speaking it and having the system transcribe it for you is a lot easier than writing it down yourself. Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, I, when your witness is done, I would love to see the completed the completed book. Just to see you gotta come back on the show when yeah. the book's done. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it becomes an international bestseller. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Happy, happy to share it. In fact, I will give a copy to David, John, and uh, Mike, and Stephen, all of you. All sure. right, all that's right. That's four people. So now it's an international yeah. bestseller because yeah, David right. is uh, in just... Europe. So he made it. Congratulations. <laughs> there you have it. Yeah. So and and if listen, if there's no pictures, David's not going to read it. Just to let you know, you can give him one. No, but... no, there's, I have a different criteria. If it's if oh, it's okay. written very if it's written very slowly, I can read it very slowly. Okay, so good. So they make sure they write slow, and then David yeah. can read it. Right, he doesn't want to write fast. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the criteria. Uh, it works really well. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Well, yeah. thank you for coming. This was very cool. So for anybody that wants to get a hold of Muhammad, we will have his details below. Yeah. And if for some reason you can't figure out how to do that or you can't find him on LinkedIn, 
just in the comments section for the show, just reach out to us or send us an email and well, we'll put you in. Mohammed. Mohammed has done a, I got to tell, I got to say that Mohammed has done a fantastic job of mastering Google because if you just Google meet Sadiq, he's the only one, he's the, the top, top selection. There you go. Meet Sadiq, S I D D I Q U E dot com. So he's go. got it, he's got it covered. He's on all the socials, all the LinkedIn's. Very cool. Well, Mohammed, thank you so much and good luck. And let us know how it works out. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank, okay, you. thank, thank you. you. Have a great day. Thank you. Cheers. Bye bye. That was really cool. I like that. That's it's, it's right, interesting. To, to, to one extent, I find it very interesting. To another extent, because when he was talking to me, I'm like, what am I going to write about? Like, you know, how you do acquisition. I'd like, right, it doesn't, right. for me, no, it but doesn't really it's for a different, it's, it's, it's for, for, for a different group. Now, what I said to him is, and he said to me, if he does the show and he gets lots of people that I get to write a chapter. So I would say is that the Lost Dollar Business Club would write a chapter. Yeah. yeah like, think, how do you start a podcast? Type of thing. We would do it as that just for, that would be the chapter that we would stick in his book. Yeah, that'd be fun. So that'd be, that fun. would be a fun chapter. We would do it. But we, oh, we get all you listeners, fun. All you yeah. listeners, get on it. Go to meetsadiq.com and register yourself to become an author. Yeah. There you go. And, and, and for some people, to his point, if I'm a consultant that does whatever I do, and I'm like, you know, and, I, and I'm not, and he, to a point, he's also correct. If I write a book, people think I'm an expert. And I can be the dumbest guy in the world. No, it's, right? it's, so it's, the it's way, one of those it's things. Way, it's the way modern marketing works, especially yeah. if you're talking about people who want to be thought leaders. If you're right. not published, you're not a thought leader. Even if you're published you, in an Amazon scenario, it, right. people want to see that you're published. It's it's yeah. undeniable. And here's what's really funny. I've read some of these books that these guys give you at their conferences. You oh, know, yeah. like, and I'm reading, I'm like, come on. A five-year-old wrote this? This is come crap. On. And I'm yeah. like, you're like, like, who paid you to come up here and talk about nothing? So I'm hoping that the 52 that he picks, or yeah. will be one of them. So 51. But the 52 that he picks. When you read their stuff, and if if you meet them, they really do it better have be good. It better be yeah. good. Yeah. So I, I wish them the best with that. I hope it I hope it works out well. I like to see it when it's done, and then I would we'll definitely read it and review it on the show. I'm wondering, you know, just there's so many, you know, people publish so easily now that yeah. it becomes a it's sort of the same sort of uh, scenario where you. You now it's I'll equate it to e ETFs, right? Uh, right? Exchange traded funds. There, there used to be a small group. And there's right. thousands of them now. Right. And right. Well, there's of, crypto ones now too, so now everybody can do it. Yeah. Uh, well, no, that's not the point. Too. The point is that you know it, it went from something that you could curate fairly easily to now it's like a, a, a whole new universe. So it's sort of right. yeah, uh, but you know the thing is you give. Yeah, but you, I mean, I, I see what you're saying, John, and I, I agree with you is that there's just a lot of, I mean, Stephen, there's a lot of garbage out there. But Correct. the fact is, if somebody's published something, you at least get a little bit of insight into the way right. they think. And so it gives you a little bit of a precursor to say, do I want to work with this guy? Right. Yeah. And if you're published, you're really putting yourself out there. And I give, you know, I give some credit to people who, who publish, you know, just to be to say, look, I'm going to hang up my shingle in a new way and just be out there. So, Well, Brown Car Guy, who does Sermon on the German in our channel, Sermon which will German, be out yeah. next week, yeah, he publ he's published his second book. Um, there you go. Because the first one did well, so and he self-published on Amazon. Yeah. You know, Amazon, I think, charges you 20 bucks, and you can they do all the work. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. And if you're a good writer, like for me to do it, I'd have to do it, which I'd have to speak into my laptop. Um, Cause I know for my master's thesis, when I gave it to my wife's, uh, my friend's wife to review it for me, she said it's the best 600 page sentence she ever saw. I said, thank you. Um, Cause I didn't realize you got to put commas and periods and chapters. Who knew that's just crazy stuff. So they had to clean it up for me. So for me to write a book, I would have to talk then give it to ChatGPT four and have it clean it up and then give it to a, an editor to like really clean it up. Um, and so that I get, cause writing is not, I think too quick. I can't type as quick as I should. Um, so, but, and the fact that they're willing to help somebody write the five pages, I think mean, that's awesome because I think that gets you, you know, to where you need to go. And if you have that kind of support, it's good. I, like I said, it'll be fun to read it when it comes out. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Let's we'll um, see. You know what the different expert, what the different. I want. I don't know if it's expert stories or case studies or a combination, 
but it'd be interesting to see um, how that looks. So yeah, yeah, that would be something I would I would like I would take a read through it. So well, he said he's going to send copies. some copies, so I'm going to hold them to that. And you're going to write yeah, slow, to so David can read it. So there you go. <laughs> there so it works out well. So all so right, let's do a little lost and lost found. And found. Gentlemen. David, you want to want to run around some lost and found? Let's do lost and found. Ever wonder right. how millions vanish into thin air, or how a single dollar can make all the difference? Join us on Lost and Found where we dive into the wild world of financial mysteries. From misplaced fortunes to unexpected windfalls, we unravel the stories of people, companies, organizations, and even governments who've lost and found millions. Lost and found because every dollar has a story. Ooh, that's exciting. John, let's every just start dollar. with you because... Because you, I'm assuming you have to go find one really quick. So what do you have? No, no. <laughs> uh, so a company called Lumio, which is a solar-based solar, solar -based, uh, company out of Utah, has yeah. uh, filed for bankruptcy. Uh, and it. yeah, so it just, uh, it's just sort of, uh, I guess, a continuation of, of this, this whole uh, uh, solar business that's you know unless it has a s subsidy doesn't right. you know, doesn't doesn't succeed you know it it uh it follows what you know uh, was one of the bigger companies which is called sun power which also yeah. filed for bankruptcy half a million customers yeah 1.1 billion in debt and just it just doesn't work right because uh <clears throat> the demand just Dis has disappeared because uh, in April of 2023, the California Public Utilities Commission substantially reduced the the payout for energy that you produce that you send back into the grid, and so right. so 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 then that has affected the 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 break even or when you when you break even after the investment you make in your solar paneling at home, yeah. and so you know these companies are just going belly up. Um, yeah. Probably well, also it, it, because uh, you know the the solar panels that we were importing from China because China controls eighty percent of the market. Yeah, uh, you know the hundred percent tariff doesn't doesn't help anymore. Hundred percent so, you know. tariffs it doesn't help yeah. either. So it, uh, you combine it, uh, not bueno for all these solar companies. Yeah, so right. yeah. that's not good. All right, Michael, what do you have for us? And by the way, God bless you. So, yeah, but, <laughs> the people on the podcast well, least, michael sneezed so, at least i go on mute though i went on mute though. there you go that was very nice of you all right so look i got i got two for you the first one is engineers from cornell university and the university of florence have okay. taken an edible mushroom species the king oyster mushroom and yeah. had it control a robot so yeah. now you've got this mushroom robot hybrid where this thing is crawling across the ground, racing to, to cross the finish line. And uh, right. they are very interested in using mushrooms for cybernetic technology. So that that's creepy and exciting all at the same time. Mushroom robots. I like mushroom, mushroom robots. robots. That's, that's definitely a win for the uh, future. Are you stealing my thunder now? Oh, yes. Mushroom robots. Oh my God! Mushroom I don't believe robot. that's possible. That's David, that's possible. David, that's David's story. Probably he's got a whole video now. So now David, I got one more. I got <laughs> one more for you. I got one more for you that we might have to do a whole episode on, sure. which is DIY pirated medicine. So there really? is a collective called the Four Thieves Vinegar Collective, and these yeah. are, these guys have spent the last few years teaching people how to make make uh, do-it-yourself versions of expensive pharmaceuticals at home. Wow. Nice. Using wow. these very cool, very yeah. cool uh, $500 micro lab machines. That oh, we got to have a show. Create, you, I mean, we got to yeah. do a show on these guys. And the guy, the, he, makes, he makes a good point. He says, look, uh, intellectual property law is based off of something that came out of 1400s Venice. They're not applicable. Right. They're being abused, and people are dying every day because of it. And it's not okay. So these guys are these guys are out for blood. Wow. I like it. Let's, we should have them on the show. 
We got to get him on the show. So I, can make I, I think we should we get him on we get him on the show, guys. I love it. Yeah, that's all. Well, that would be a great show. I mean, I'll work on that. Definitely. Please work Definitely. on that. All right. And the mushroom robot thing, we should just have go over to John's house and chase him around the house during the show because he'll be freaked out the whole time. That'd and let's awesome. record that. And yeah. we can have our view, and we can send all our viewers mushrooms before the show, and that'd be even better. But anyway, uh, yeah, um, edible, um, edible yeah. mushrooms. Edible mushrooms. Yeah. There you go. Well, the, it, the was, show would probably be a lot better if they were all magic mushrooms. But well, that's another story. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> hey, I don't know. But yeah, yeah, that's tricky. I saw an article yesterday in the FT, and there's a bunch of them in the Economist, and I had to pick one. And it was so hard. But the one I came up with, which made me chuckle the most, was Geely, who owns Vovo. And because you remember a few years ago, everybody was on there. We're going to be all electric by 2030 and That's blah, right. blah, and all this yeah. horse crap. Yesterday, Vovo said, nope, we're not going all electric by 2030. Probably not going to happen until 2050 because they realize electric cars are just a bunch of crap. They're worth pollute more because of what you have to do to get it. And now China's holding all the precious minerals, whether it's for electric cars or chips or whatever, going, no, nah, no, nah, we're not going to ship anymore. So now people are like, whoa, well, that's not a that's not a good thing. So they're all worried. So I like, I like Volvo for saying no. And then also Volkswagen is closing one of their German plants and um, in Nazi land. And apparently the uh, Germans are not happy about that. They're like, what do you mean you're well, closing? You're a German company. I thought what, that was what do you think? Well, Deutsche Bank well, argues that the Germans don't work hard enough. So yeah. I know. And also, yeah, also yeah, Vol- yeah. Going, going back to your Volvo story, yeah, the, you know, twenty three hundred they're putting they're uh, making redundant in Sweden. The Volvo uh, people. Oh wow! So um, really? yeah, all the people are working on the on the on the uh, the hallelujah Volvo. cars. Yeah, yeah they yeah. play they they place their bets wrong, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Just, Listen, so, I, I, uh, I keep saying. It's it's there's these electric cars are crap. I mean they're very like even Rolls Royce came out with one and I saw it the other day. It's beautiful, and then all I'm thinking to myself, how much quiet. radiation or whatever are you emitting to me? I'm like I'm gonna glow in the dark, which is cool because we drove it at night, and I know when we went to dinner <laughs> at night we all glue. So people that look, those people came out of the glow in the dark car. Um, but no, it's like it's it comes to a point where. I don't care if you're spending whatever it is for a Tesla and they can't give away cyber trucks or you're buying a Rolls Royce or the Porsche or whatever, um, BYD electric, any of them. There's a point where to the guy who makes these funny Instagram videos about his cyber truck, you know, where it takes 12 hours to get a 50 mile charge out of it for $300. And he makes fun of it. He goes, yeah, you go to a gas station and pay $35 and you fill up your tank in three minutes. There's, there's a, there's a thing to that. So until you can make me a car that's safe, like from radiation and also make it that it's well, almost safe like from fire and, and yeah, safe from fire. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, I mean, if electric car gets on fire, the fire department technically can't put it out the old fashioned way. They have to get these new blankets, right. put, you know, this mm-hmm. blanket over. I'm like, no, this is ridiculous. It's like on the, motor, so these electric on the motorway, cars they can't are, even pick you up. Yet. The normal pickup service won't pick your car. Won't do it. It's electric. No, they there won't you go. go. No. Yeah. So yeah, so it's, it's a cute idea. I don't think yeah, we're there yet. I think it needs no a lot more stuff. No yeah, but BYD, I will say, out of everything I read about them, they're producing the longer version, like 2,000 kilometers. They are, but they have, they're having big issues because you know, the, the European Union won't allow Ch- uh, Chinese yeah. cars in. The Brits are doing it slightly yeah. differently. Here they too. Got the, they got the heebie-jeebies about you know not being able to export uh, yeah. stuff into yeah. China. Um, so they've, they've backed away a little bit from it, but um, I know a couple of three people who've got and a big a brown car guy said it as well that if you've got a, a Chinese uh, electric car, you have a lot. Mm-hmm. If you have service, you have service problems because how, nobody knows how how to fix them because yeah. you're not a, a traditional car <laughs> mechanic. You have to right. know a lot about electrics, which is a yeah. whole new generation of yeah. people. Yeah. Which which. Oh, you know, most countries are just going to say no. They're not going to do it. Listen, you have Tesla, yeah. you have Porsche, now you have Rolls Royce, and you have the Hyundai. And the, I mean, they all. There's a list. At the end of the day, you when you go to the garage for service, I don't know why you're going to the garage for service, but you know, maybe to lube up your tires or check the oil air pressure. At the end of the day, you it's just a kid changing a battery. You know what I mean? And so, but the the problem is the battery. You know, it's like when BMW came out with that, their M1. That's, that's yeah, no, you have to be, not you just have the to battery. Have to, the electric no, you, motors you have, do fail quite quite a bit. 
Absolutely. Yeah, and you have to be how hold um, certificates as an electrician in order to right. work on these cars. So oh wow! In Maybe in Europe, Europe here you don't. Here, any sixteen-year-old with a screwdriver can just have at it. So, but anyway, we're, we're, but hey, we're, was it a loss or a found then, there, Stephen? Yeah, you went off on you went off on Vol cars. But I, think, yeah. I think Volvo not going all electric twenty thirty. I think that's a found dollar. Okay. Yeah, then definitely. If I'm a Volvo shareholder, I have a chubby, and I'm extremely happy right now. <laughs> okay. So, because I'm because I think we're you well, make, I, we'll uh, make money. I, you know, I mean, I, all, my, all my all my thunder has been stolen with you know mush, mushrooms. Mushroom robot. That's yeah. I told you that was. Oh, well, I, I didn't have a visual for it though. No, 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 no. I didn't. I've never heard of it before. And it's, uh, but there you go. But it was it was fun. But um, the the What's strange thing is, I, I I somebody's actually sent me this on on social media during the week, and it's something so incredibly normal. That okay. I thought it was worth worth talking about because it's a, a normal, literally an everyday product, and these okay. people have decided to do something just slightly different with it, um, and it's become incredibly successful because of the way that they're marketing it, and um, it's good old fashioned bread rolls. <laughs> oh boy, God! Oh boy, that loaf our buns. Yeah. That's very funny. Yeah, well, talk about good? marketing. Uh, yeah, exactly. So this very is from nice. this evidently this is a very famous time when he's baker. Thank you, uh, Chat GPT, for translating it all for me. Um, because <laughs> yeah. it's got the pricing and everything at the front. And yeah, it, uh, of course, the wonderful thing about this is, of course, if, uh, on social media, people have been, you know, buying normal normal buns from the supermarket and putting them in the trousers and in t-shirts and whatever. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean crazy, these crazy. are these are low carb buns, and you, you got your six pack. Absolutely brilliant. Hats off that to them. Good marketing. You know, not yeah. not not weird, not wacky, but definitely. That is really leave, well, it, leave, it, to the, leave it to the Taiwanese. Yeah. yeah. Kudos to the Taiwan. Well, sure, because when China invades, they got to give them something. So there you They're go. They're going to give them those low carb buns. Yeah. There you go. So nice. next now next week, do we have anything other than David? Well, David's going to be on holiday again. You know, the next billionaires week, and their David jets and holidays and yachting. David is on holiday. Because yes. What do we have next week? Anything? We have so next week, uh, we don't have a guest next week, so we're on our own. But Ooh. we are soon to have we are soon to have a guest from uh Huro AI. So that's going to be well, a big, two that's from Hero, I think, right? The CTO and the CEO. The CTO and the CEO from Hero AI. Uh, it's going to be big, but that's not next week. That's not next Saturday. It's probably right. the following Saturday. What a cliff! Should, just should we tell everybody what Hero AI, Hero AI can translate languages through satellite and Wi-Fi instantaneously? Well, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's good. And they've got another so, technology that they have a chip that's 33 that times that, faster than Nivea that's a, uses 1,000th less power. Does that mean that if we run this through the show, everybody will be able to understand what we're talking about? Actually, so, no. What that means is that if you're a company like Netflix and you put this in your satellite or through your system, that if you want to, if I want to in, in America watch, just say, a, a Chinese or a Korean show, when they speak, they will, it'll come through my headset. If you will, or the whatever in English in their voice, because the technology will translate it instantaneously. Um, they have, I know they have one because I saw it the other day for conferences now. So I know conferences where people from all around the world go and, you know, they speak not, the English isn't the best. They can now just sit at a conference with their Bluetooth in and the speaker can speak in whatever and they'll hear it in their language. Yeah. So, Next stop, of course, will be the music industry, which means any Tom, Dick, or Sally. Or Harry, yeah. or whatever, we'll, we'll be able to sing it with a crap voice and it'll come out sounding like wonder, you know, like the best it's singing ever. It's gonna sound great, it's gonna sound yeah. great. It's sound great. Yes. So we have some more, we have exciting things coming up on Lost Dollar Business Club. That's right. So, everybody, thank you for joining us this Saturday. Have yeah. a wonderful rest of your weekend. We will see you all next week. Don't forget to subscribe and like and tell your friends to watch. And if tell you your want to get a hold of watch, watch comment, comment. Yeah. if you want. Comment. If you want to get a hold of Muhammad, let us know. And if you can't figure out how to do it, we'll put you in touch with him. Um, and hopefully he'll come back and we can see his book. Yeah, fun. and uh, like I say, ladies, uh, watch out for those low-carb buns.